So in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, aromat aromaticity and whether or not we could distinguish is a compound aromatic or non-aromatic. Now, before you guys freak out, I'm going to create another, another video, part two, which will be on, is it aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic, right? So this video is only for students who, you know, their professor wants, okay, well, we don't really care about anti-aromatic. Anti -aromatic. I just want you to tell me, is it aromatic or non-aromatic, all right? So, so even if you see a compound that you might think is anti-aromatic, we're going to classify it as non-aromatic because that's, that's all we're doing in this video. And for the second video, we're going to take on the idea of anti-aromaticity and, and then you'll get the full scope. But I knew, but I know when I took this class, my professor only wanted me to know, is it aromatic or anti or non-aromatic? So with that being said, let's, let's get started. So there's a rule. There are a couple of rules we got to follow. And these are called Huckle's, Huckle's rules, all right? This is a C right here. All right. Uh, so before I get started, I just want to show you something here. If I take this alkene here and I have and I add potassium permanganate in uh, cold conditions, here's what I get. I get the diol. I get the diol. If I take benzene and I react it in potassium permanganate, uh, I get no reaction, right? If I take cyclohexene and add bromine and, and some sort of solvent, I get the, the dibromo compound, okay? Well, what's the point I'm trying to prove here? Aromatics are special, all right? You won't get alkene chemistry whenever we're dealing with aromatics. And so this is the reason why it's very important that we have to distinguish these. Now, uh, there's a set of rules we gotta follow. These are called Huckel's rules, okay? And it says that, the first rule says that all atoms have to be sp2 hybridized, which means that they're flat. Now, if they're sp2 hybridized, that means that we actually have a planar ring. Uh, so those rules kind of go hand in hand. Now, it has to be conjugated, right? So if they're sp2, uh, it's flat, has to be in a conjugated system, conjugated rings, okay? And the last rule is, is this 4n plus 2 rule, uh, pi electron. Personally, uh, organic chemistry is, is not that much of a math, so we're going to kind of gloss over the effect of this rule, and here's what we're going to say. If it's aromatic, uh, then in the ring you have 2 pi electrons, 6 pi electrons, 10 pi electrons, and I'm just going to keep on adding 4 and 4 and 4 and 4. So eventually I get 14 pi electrons, 18, okay? So this is what you got to remember. So uh, just to make your life much more easier and not worry about this rule, we just want to, okay, if we see 2 pi electrons or 6 or 10, that's aromatic, okay? So without further ado, let's go to a couple of examples. Now, before I, I jump to the examples, I want to explain something that's very important because it's going to become confusing if I do not explain this. So uh, delocalization, right? In organic chemistry, we talked about this is actually, uh, you know, this is related to resonance. And the whole idea behind this is that uh, the electrons does not belong to one atom. Okay, so it's very important that we know this. Now let's now let's get started. What if I give you these three molecules here? Okay. Are these aromatic or non-aromatic? I'm gonna draw my hydrogens. Okay, so I'm looking at these three compounds. Are these aromatic or non-aromatic? Well, my atoms, the first rule says my atoms have to be sp2 hybridized. This has three, uh, four bonds around it, 
So four electron groups, one, two, three, four. So that's sp3. So therefore, this is not aromatic. Right? Now, what about this one? Well, how many pi electrons we have? Now, uh, before I move on, we only have two pi electrons here. So again, uh, um, even though we have two pi electrons, we still did not have the idea of sp2 atoms. So another important point is you cannot fail any one of these rules or else there's something else, okay? So even if you pass one, uh, that does not mean it's aromatic. So you have to pass all. Now, taking a look at this compound here, uh, these lone pairs are not localized, which means that uh, uh, they do not belong to the single atom. So what I could actually do is actually uh, delocalize this lone pair into the ring to give me four pi electrons, but that still doesn't get me anywhere. So this is non-aromatic. Right? And you could see it has four pi electrons. Now, in reality, this is anti-aromatic, right? Uh, but again, we don't care about anti-aromaticity in this video. Again, okay? So we see that it has four pi electrons. When we localize these electrons into the ring, it has four pi electrons. Well, we said that in order for it to be aromatic, it has that two, six, and then we increase by four, okay? So that's non-aromatic. Now, what about this one? Ah, well, let's see. We have sp2 hybridized atoms, sp2, sp2. We have two pi electrons. It's conjugated, right? So I could fling these electrons over here and bring my plus charge here. I could fling the double bond over back here and bring the plus charge somewhere else, okay? So it's conjugated, it's flat. It has two pi electrons, so this is aromatic. All right. So let's look at a couple more examples. So we're going to take a look at these examples here, and uh, this is where you got to be very careful. So this is furan. Now it has two lone pairs on the oxygen. All right. So is this aromatic or non-aromatic? Well, in the ring, I have four pi electrons. All right. Now outside, you know, these electrons actually delocalize, right? So this is what I want you to remember. If you could get first of all nature likes low stability right benzene is actually a real stable molecule and it's the idea because it's aromatic anytime you could force one of the electrons to become into the ring to give you you know two pi electrons six pi electrons or some sort of aromaticity low st uh very stable molecule then do it so actually uh and that's why i explained the idea of delocalization so I could actually hybridize one of these lone pairs, uh, well, delocalize one of these two, uh, one of these lone pairs into the ring to give me six pi electrons, and I still have these two out here. Now, so that would give me four, that would give me six pi electrons, uh, which matches the rule, right? That will give me six pi electrons. Now it's conjugated, and look, my oxygen is now sp2 hybridized with one, two, three electron groups being around it. So again, I know it looks like it's uh, eight pi electrons, but that's the idea of delocalization. The uh, these lone pairs do not actually only belong to the oxygen. Okay, and again, whenever we could somehow delocalize lone pairs into the ring to give us an air, uh, uh, some sort of pi electron that matches with aromaticity, we're gonna do it. Okay, so in this case, this actually has six pi electrons and it's aromatic. Now, what about this one, All right? How many pi electrons it has? It has two, four, six. Now, uh, you might say to yourself, okay, well, what about hybridization? This is one, two, three, four. 
So it'd be SB3. So typically this is SB3. But again, remember we said that if we could somehow delocalize the electrons into the ring to give us aromaticity, we're going to do it. So if I delocalize these electrons into the ring, I have... Now I have an sp2 hybridized atom, I have 6 pi electrons, and this is aromatic. And this is why I explained the idea of delocalization. Uh, anytime we could get aromaticity, uh, we're going to do it. Now what about this one? The oxygen has two lone pairs. All right. So is this aromatic? Well, first of all, this is not even conjugated. Okay. So this is not aromatic. So we, we, we don't need to go any further. Okay. It's not conjugated. There are no double bonds. Uh, this is just not aromatic. Okay. Now what about this one? Again, it's the idea. I have an sp3 hybridized atom here. I have two four pi electrons into the ring, but again, these electrons are delocalized, which means that I could somehow, uh, somehow force two of these lone pairs to be inside the ring with only two remaining on nitrogen. So that will give me two, four, and I'm just gonna draw these lone pairs in here, okay? So uh, it's just an illustration point here. I could somehow delocalize two of these lone pairs into the ring to give me two, four, six pi electrons, and look, my nitrogen is now sp2 hybridized. So therefore, this is actually aromatic. Now, what about this one? Well, without further ado, Look at my nitrogen. It's sp3 hybridized. There are no lone pairs to delocalize. They're just bonds. There are there. Okay. So this is non-aromatic. Okay. So that's non-aromatic. Now, uh, let's look at these compounds here. I hate drawing seven membered ring. Let's see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is a seven membered ring. Uh, I'm sorry for my terrible, terrible drawing here. Okay. That took a while to draw, but are these, so, so let's take a look at this first one. Is this aromatic or non-aromatic? Well, we have two, four, six pi electrons, but hopefully we should see that this is an sp3 hybridized carbon. So this is not, okay. That's, that's non-aromatic. Okay. What about this one? Well, it's conjugated. We have two, four, six pi electrons. So that works. This is sp2 along with all these other atoms. So this is actually aromatic. Now, what about this one? All right. This is two, four, six. Again, this is a negative charge. These electrons are actually uh, localized. They're localized, right? They're localized. So you could fling these into the ring, right? So we could hybridize these electrons into the ring to give us an sp2 hybridized carbon, right? But if that gives us an sp2 hybridized carbon, well, what do we have in the ring? We have eight pi electrons now. So this is eight, uh, eight pi electrons. So this is not aromatic. And again, in reality, this is actually anti-aromatic. But again, for this video, we do not care about that. Okay. Now, what about this one? Well, it's, 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 you know, my boron is sp2 hybridized. All these other carbons here are sp2 hybridized. So that gives us, it, it's flat. It's in the ring. How many pi electrons we have? Two, four, six. Okay. So this is aromatic. So that's aromatic. Uh, let's take a look at another one all right so what about this one is this aromatic or not aromatic well this is not aromatic and again it's for the simple it has uh, uh six pi electrons but it's not in a ring okay it's not in a ring